Thank you for joining us, Dr. Hales. Could you summarize the key findings of the Living Planet Report 2012? Yes, thank you. Uh, the Living Planet Report is WWF's once every two year statement of the state of the world's environment and the impact of human behavior upon that. For the state of the environment, the state of nature, uh, we have the Living Planet Index, which is a database made up of information from more than 9,000 populations of, of animals. We found that over the last 50 years, the Living Planet Index has actually gone down by 28%. This means that we've lost about one third of the natural health of our planet. We've lost one third of our natural capital. The reason for this lies in the other index in the Living Planet Report, which is the ecological footprint. The ecological footprint measures the weight that we put on the planet of our activity. That weight is based upon how many there are of us, the population size, and how much stuff we consume. The more we consume, and the more of us that are doing the consuming, the heavier is the impact upon the planet. We find that these things are not equally distributed. In rich countries, we find usually low population levels, but very high levels of consumption. In poor countries, uh, we have high population levels, but relatively low levels of consumption. But of course, with the changes that are taking place in the economic structures of the world, uh, there are now many poor, formerly poor countries that are e growing economically very, very quickly. And in particular, China and India are two of these, both of which have high populations, both of which have very high growth rates. And so it's decisions that are taken in those types of countries that are going to be absolutely critical uh, to the future of, uh, of the planet. Um, Singapore has a small population. So, in absolute terms, Singapore is only a small player in consumption patterns. But when you look at the consumption in Singapore, it is very high. Singapore has the second largest ecological footprint of all the countries in the Asia-Pacific region. So even though Singapore may feel, feel small, there are actually important decisions to be made here, uh, important choices to be made by people, uh, which will benefit the planet. Could you tell us what some of these choices look like? Yes, a lot of those choices are lifestyle choices. Um, this week the government has released its new strategy for climate change and in there it is, it is emphasised that uh, a lot of consumer choice can play an important role there. Um, how often do we keep our household goods before renewing them and throwing them out? Are we using refrigerators, washing machines and air conditioners uh, which have the highest level of energy efficiency? Are we driving cars with unnecessarily uh, large engines? Do we need to drive cars at all? These are all good questions that we need to ask in Singapore. But it's not just about energy, it's also about the food that we consume. One of the areas of concern to WWF is one of the richest coral reefs in the world. We call it the Coral Triangle. This is in the seas near Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, the Sulu, Sulawesi Sea. Many of our seafood restaurants in Singapore had taken their fish from there. 80% of the fish stocks of that region are either in decline or already overfished. In WF Singapore, we've produced a fish guide uh, which classifies fish species into three categories. Don't eat, can eat, think carefully before you eat it. And this guide can be used in restaurants, it can be used in supermarkets to determine people's choice as to which fish it is they're going to consume. So these individual choices are going to be vitally important for the future of our planet.